So first off, unshielded twisted pair. Okay. Unshielded twisted pair is in most cases a 24 gauge four pair cable. The exception is a category 6A cable, I believe is a 23 gauge cable. Uh, and the gauge is simply the size of the copper conductors inside the cable. Be aware, I have seen several instances of cable that is labeled, for example, category six, but it is definitely not category six cable. It's a fake counterfeit cable. Often this kind of cable is manufactured in China. I have mostly run into this cable in Thailand, although I have seen a little bit of it in Cambodia. So beware, counterfeit cable is a thing and uh, make sure that you're getting what you're paying for. If you're paying for category six cable, buy it from a reputable distributor and uh, make sure that it actually is a category six cable. Installation mistakes. Never install a cable for more than 90 meters. No unshielded twisted pair cable should ever go for more than 90 meters. Now you might say, wait, wait, wait a minute. I remember the last talk you did where you said 100 meters. Well, that is to allow for patch cables at the end. For the, so a patch cable at the rack end, at your network rack end, and a patch cable in the office end, okay? The other uh, big mistake I've seen, and we have some examples of these, is never more than one centimeter, one centimeter of unsheathed cable at your termination point. Another big issue is termination should be in jacks. And we'll look at this, not RJ45 plugs. If you're taking and installing a cable in a building and crimping the RJ45 plug on the end of it, that is not the appropriate way of doing it. It needs to be installed in a jack. Labeling should be made at each end of every run. So here is the type of unshielded twisted pair jack that we use at the University of Oregon. This just happens to be a vendor called Panduit. We really love those, but uh, you will typically be finding a different type of, of jack, which is in this uh, slide that shows a poorly done termination. These are 110 terminations. You use a punch tool to punch the cables down. The problem with this is, remember, you only have one centimeter of unsheathed cable. Now, this was discovered in Africa. We were there, oh, some years ago, and we were setting up in the lab, and we couldn't understand why we weren't getting a gigabit connection between the network rack, the switch in the network rack that was just down the hallway, and any of the jacks in, in this room that we were set up in. It was kind of a computer lab. We couldn't get one gigabit. We could only get 100 megs, and we couldn't figure out what the heck was going on. So, you know, I, being a cabling guy, unscrewed the faceplate, pulled it out, and looked at it. Well, this is the problem. If your cable installations look like this, they will not support one gigabit. Remember, one centimeter, the, the cable sheath needs to be right up against the jack. And uh, we have some pictures of some more properly done ones here a little bit. The second issue, terminate in jack panels. And uh, this is a, a slide showing the front and rear of some types of jack panels. These again have 110 terminations on the back where you punch them down but these are mounted in a rack, same rack as your switches are gonna be mounted in, and we'll talk about racks in a little bit, and uh, the cable needs to be neatly dressed in the front, and here is a photo of the rear of a rack. This actually is in the building that I worked in for 30 some years. I had my office in this building, and I probably did a whole bunch of those terminations, now this is not in a jack, uh, like a keystone jack, like we saw in the poorly done termination, but rather in the back of a patch panel. But you can see there is very, very little unsheathed cable there. If you zoom in on that, particularly those of you who have downloaded these slides and you can zoom in, you'll see there's very, very little unsheathed cable. Same in a station jack. This is next 
slide is a picture of, we have a, an outlet in, uh, this happens to be a copier fax, you know, copier room and a workroom. But we see that the device plate is terminated in a jack, not just a plug that's crimped on the end of a cable. Labeling is much easier to do and should be very, very simple. So as you look at this, like if I'm standing in front of the jack panel that's in the rack, uh, if you read right above that jack where there's a cable plugged in, what does that say? That says, that says room 370. So there's no question when I'm standing in front of that jack panel in the, the, at that rack room, where in the heck that device is. Now, in my campus, if I go to that room 370, that's where this uh, little device plate is. And you can see that there's jacks 3177, 3178, 3179, and 3180. So indeed, if I follow that cord in the room, that's where that's plugged in. Now, in my case, in my campus, well, every building has a unique number. So building three happens to be this building. And we label our network rack rooms with a letter. So this is the E rack, and there you go. So if I'm standing in front of the jack plate, I know if I go to the E rack, I will find this jack panel. So labeling should be done at the time of installation. And again, this is an example of one of the four-way outlets that we pull. Four cables to every outlet.